lot nicer weather today at least. No pouring rain like it's been the past few days. Alright, well, what's going on today? I guess this is the most interesting thing I read. Apparently, as you all know, in the US, apparently all that issue about things like mandatory remote ID is basically generating a lot of controversy. You have a lot of, from what I gather, commercial businesses or people who operate some kind of commercial business celebrating at the fact that this will enable them to do more stuff. Whereas for someone like a recreational flyer, they would say it's basically taking their rights away. With that in mind, the question usually comes up, who comes up with this stuff? For example, did they talk to a recreational flyer? Did they talk to only commercial people? So it's kind of interesting reading this one here. It says, press release, new members appointed to the Drone Advisory Committee. U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Elaine L. Chow today announced new appointments to the Federal Aviation Administration's FAA Drone Advisory Committee, or DAC. The Drone Advisory Committee is key to helping the FAA keep pace with the innovation while protecting safety said U.S. Transportation Secretary Elaine L. Chow. So with that in mind, I guess this new Drone Advisory Committee, it says as of 105-2021, these are the people who are going to be shaping the future, I guess, of things like regulations in the U.S. And why it's interesting is because what happens in the U.S. is probably going to happen around the world as well, potentially. And from what I gather from reading this, it is like a lot of big companies even companies like CNN apparently from what I read here which I guess is okay because you need every type I guess you could say I guess it's a more of a debate of who is the right choice within that specific category one immediate thing I noticed though because in terms of things like for a recreational flyer I believe before the people who were the most vocal about it was DJI I mean they make the drones so it would make sense why they're very vocal about representing things like say a recreational point of view or just saying is not for example like a huge airplane in many cases but apparently they've been removed from the list like in terms of their representation as well I remember watching that conference or that zoom call there's something in the US is called is it the AMA they're supposed to represent people like say model aircrafts and when I watched that video feed it looked like the guy was falling asleep he didn't say anything but apparently they were removed from this list as well so wow is there actually any representation, I guess you could say, for a recreational person, like a hobbyist user? So that got me the most interested in reading this. Who exactly are the new representatives, so to speak, for a recreational flyer? Because like here in Canada, my question still remains, for a law that's affecting mostly recreational flyers, as apparently they are the bulk and majority of the operators, that's when you want to say, it just seems like there was no representation at all in general. And from the looks of it, I think this is the closest thing in terms of a recreational person, in terms of a representation. There's a category here that says citizen UAS operators. I'm assuming that would be something like a recreational person because there are other categories like corporate UAS operators, which I would assume means someone that owns a company or does it for commercial reasons. So it says here the two people are Kenji Sugihara, who is the Chief Executive Officer and President of Drone Service Providers Alliance and Vic Moss, owner of Moss Photography. Actually immediately reading that I was like, that's a recreational flyer? Or is that commercial just by the name of the companies and so forth? That's what kind of got me confused actually when I tried looking this up in terms of these people. So the first one on the list was this person here and I looked at the site and my immediate thing was, okay, what is this company about and all that? And I looked at the About Us, or who's basically in charge, and here's the person here, the Kenji Sakahara. But then right below it also says Vic Moss. I was like, what? These two people are affiliated with the same company or organization? Really? Shouldn't there be completely different perspectives, completely independent people in that sense? Because this would tell me they would have kind of the same opinions, which isn't exactly, in my opinion, the best way to get perspectives because it says in their bio the Kenji person is a graduate at Dartmouth College and University of Oregon School of Law. Kenji is an attorney and CEO or president of DSPA. He is chief pilot and one of the co-founders of ACAM Aerials. He has been in the industry for over seven years and experienced flying both single and dual operations for major brand names such as Ford, ABC and Disney. Kenji is one of the most knowledgeable drone policy experts in the world, having played a critical role in the 2017 FAA Remote ID and Tracking Aviation Rulemaking Committee. So that's kind of interesting. I guess he is really for things like Remote ID, I would assume. And at the same time, it sounds, again, very commercial to me. It doesn't really sound like just a regular 
average drone, I guess you could say, maybe flying like an FPV racing drone, just like out in the open on average. And then this guy here says, Vic Moss is the COO and Vice President of DSPA, a commercial photographer. He has owned Moss Photography since 1988 and has been offering drone services since 2014. Vic is a nationally recognized voice for the drone safety and advocate for reasonable drone regulations. So again, it seems like commercial person as well. Because even on the mission statement on the organization, it says, our mission is to create a positive environment for drone service providers by advocating for reasonable regulation through positive advocacy and increasing the professionalism throughout our industry by providing educational resources and promoting a culture of safety. So again, it comes down to promoting things like commercial interests, I would imagine, just with what's written here anyways. It doesn't really sound like, I guess you could say, a regular recreational person in that sense. But as usual, I think it's interesting just to read things like the comments on social media because companies and so forth, they can write whatever they want in corporate literatures. How does the general public react to it and how do they actually, I guess, communicate their beliefs online? And again, it kind of reveals some interesting stuff. So I believe I have the right person here. Here's like a Vic Moss posting here. It says, hey, US drone owners, you now have not one, but two representatives on a drone advisory committee. Kenji and I were both chosen. Thank you for the support during the process. So they're basically announcing this to various drone communities. And from what I see in the comments, a lot of people are happy about it, saying congratulations and all that. So I would assume from reading that, are people in the drone community in the US generally happy with the choices that those people will represent what's in their best interest? For example, like a hobbyist. That didn't seem too clear to me because I was just reading some comments here as well. Like this guy here says, I noticed they left out members that represent quote hobbyists. They have a list of executives that represent their interests. It'd be nice if they had folks that represent the folks out just to have some fun. Congrats on your selection. And then that Vic Moss person replies to them saying, Ed, Kenji, and I are hobbyists too. Wink. Hmm, that's kind of an odd statement in my opinion. Odd in the sense of if you were to just say represent a local community playing some kind of sport, I don't know, hockey or basketball, and you wanted the real opinions of what it's like from an average individual, if someone played pro basketball in the NBA or pro hockey in the NHL, would that be, I guess, a legitimate way of saying it, saying, I'm a hobbyist too, wink. Wouldn't you rather have someone who's actually non-commercial in that sense, so they can show you how it's like in the public, in everyday life? And this shows kind of more perspectives and the mindset of the person, I think. Now, this person says, hope they leave the old drones without remote ID alone and grandfather them in. Congratulations, Vic Moss. So in general, again, it seems like people are happy about the choice, but hoping things like, for example, the remote ID won't affect people just flying it for quote, fun. And then he responds saying, Bobby, no grandfathering, but easily retrofitted. So from reading that, my assumption is his perspective and stance on things like remote ID is it's here, it's coming, you should like it and adapt to it per se. So that's why he says retrofit it. So no stance of just leave people alone, I guess you could say, unless I'm wrong, but that's what I gather just from reading this from a third party perspective. And continuing to read some of the thread, this guy here says, for those that don't like remote ID, you might want to look up to see who has a patent for part of remote ID. I was like, okay, interesting comment. I'm guessing he's saying one of these two has a like patent on remote ID tech or something like that, I don't know. But then the Vic Moss guy responds saying, you're reading way too much into this. You obviously don't understand the process or what our ID is. Yes, Kenji has a patent, good for him and good for the industry. I can't think of a better person to do that. And nothing he did was insider. He used publicly available information. You need to get over this. So to my understanding, again, from reading this, this guy is basically more in the mindset of this remote ID thing is here, deal with it. That's from what I gather anyway. So if it's more from the perspective of leave people alone doing this, etc., etc., don't make over the top regulations with remote ID, it doesn't come across that way in my opinion that that's going to be his position. Some people are saying it's a conflict of interest. And then some people are saying, again, like what he expressed is no big deal. It's just a patent. So just quickly looking it up, I believe I have the right one here. It says, patent for broadcast remote ID awarded, Kenji Sugahara. And it says here, 
Aerosend, an Oregon unmanned aircraft systems drone research and development company, announced that their CEO, Kenji Sugahara, was recently awarded a patent for broadcast remote identification of drones. The recent FAA announcement of the final rule on remote identification of unmanned aircraft and upcoming ASTM standards cements the patent's applicability and relevance in the industry. And basically he's saying how proud he is, I guess, of the patent and all that. And it says, Aerosend continues to look forward to working with both the FAA and industry partners to make remote ID a success. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty clear. They're for remote ID. And an interesting, I guess, additional detail. This was back in April 12, 2017 on the same site. It says here, Aerosend proposes electronic license plate for drones. So this was back in 2017. And it says, Aerosen, an Oregon unmanned aircraft system, drone service, and data company, proposed a remote identification technology and framework to allow authorities and citizens to identify drones in the air. Aerosen understands the frustration felt by many lawmakers, law enforcement, and citizens at what they feel are reckless or intrusive activities by drone owners, said Kenji Sukahara, CEO of Aerosen and policy director of the 25,000 members of Drone User Group Network. However, we believe that any solution needs to be narrowly tailored, accessible, inexpensive, technologically simple, and balanced. Our solution achieves those goals while ensuring both accountability and remote pilot privacy. So it's kind of fascinating. This kind of shows you this wasn't just like something that came out yesterday. People like this have been doing this for years in the sense of trying to come up with ideas for remote ID and stuff like that. And now they're actually in a position, I guess you could say, to really make the big impact. So it should give you perspectives of the two people that are, in a sense, again, just based on things like the category title and stuff like that. This is the representation you have for things like, I guess, hobby users in the US. In general, I've never met these two people, so I don't know how they're like. So are people happy with the choices there in the US? Because again, just based on some of the comments and stuff I read there, it seems like people are happy about it. Where at the same time, it seems like some people are hoping they will fight for the rights of a recreational person in that sense. But from reading this, when it comes to at least things like remote ID, I don't see any comments implying, for example, no, I don't want that kid flying like a toy drone in the park to have remote ID. It didn't come across in any way from when I read this anyways. I think you should go for more people like in this case that are more recreational not people coming up with patents and remote IDs for that perspective this is my opinion if you're targeting the average person like one thing that comes to my mind in terms of a person is remember how in the past or at least I remember reading an article in the US when the FAA introduced things like drone registration and stuff like that some people were saying that's not lawful like you can't do that but they did it anyways and you had this person here like in these articles where a lawyer actually sued them and he won like this one says how a little known insurance lawyer became a symbol of drone liberty when the federal aviation administration started enforcing new rules around model aircraft pilots john taylor went from drone hobbyist to crusader or this one here it says john taylor fought the faa over registering drones and won but now what so in my opinion, in terms of perspective, a person like this would actually be really good to really get that different perspective of someone flying it, I guess you could say a hobby user. To me anyways, it doesn't matter what the topic is, isn't it better to have balanced opinions like that as opposed to people who are under the exact same umbrella and probably have the exact same opinions and motivations as to why they would want regulations the way they are. Because in many ways too, I would think it's kind of discriminating, isn't it? If you're making laws and stuff like that that affect the majority of, let's say, quote, recreational hobbyists and you don't have a really pure recreational hobbyist in there, how can you really have a clear opinion base and an accurate one to make sound judgments? Someone can chime in with a different perspective, but wouldn't that be the same thing as saying if there was an issue that affected the majority of visible minorities, wouldn't it make sense to have actual visible minorities on the board? Otherwise, it would be like saying, like, in this case, let's say it's mostly consists of non-visible minorities. Let's just say an Asian topic, okay? And let's just say it's majority of the people they put there are Caucasian. A Caucasian guy saying, okay, well, they enjoy Asian food, they enjoy Asian movies, so they're the Asian expert to represent what it's like to be a visible minority. I don't think it works that way. I mean, how is this any different in a sense? But it'd be interesting to see what people in the U.S. think about this. How do you guys feel about these decisions?
right. See you guys later.